acrylics. Um, every once in a while, I dabble in some oil paints for weathering and stuff, but I actually prefer the acrylics. I can I can control them a lot better. Um, if I'm doing quick weathering, I'll do oil-based um, uh, oil paints. But I have to work outside because it stinks with all the chemicals and how it's just. I'd rather I'd rather just use acrylic. So it's clean. Um, supposedly okay for you, which I doubt. Um, <laughs> that being said, I've eaten a lot of paint. Um, these are these are some of my figures. These are some of my contest entries. Uh, just stuff out of my own collection. Um, <clears throat> uh, I do a lot of stuff. Uh, Games Workshop miniatures. Um, cool Mini or Not has a lot of cool miniatures based on their website. Um, I'm probably most known for, for my uh, entries to Games Day, which is uh, Games Workshop. That's their big competition every year, and it's kind of, I guess, a big deal if you win. Um, uh, they did so much promotion of that over the years that um, if you do win, everyone knows who you are. Because you're on their magazine, you're on their website. It's almost immediate. And even though a lot of these other competitions have equal to or maybe better uh, painted figures in them, if nobody ever knows about it, it didn't happen. So, Games Workshop, even though in the last few years they've taken back a lot of their coverage, is not as good as it used to be. Um, in fact, this year was the first year that they started showing Games Day winners in their magazine again. They just completely stopped for a while. And that was about <laughs> they showed from all around the world. So, like, I have three issues from this year that I haven't bought one of their magazines in a long time. I have three of their issues this year because they were just chocked full of awesome models. So... Um, a lot of these are contest winners and then just stuff that I've made over the years. Um, what I do now, um, these are these are actually work in progress. Um, these are this is my this is my contest here. So um, I'm working on getting, uh, I haven't done I haven't really I've entered contests in the last couple years. None of them were actually like oh I'm making this figure for a contest. It was, it was, I have this model on my workbench that I'm doing for a customer, and here it is, my contest entry. So, um, I always did okay, but it wasn't like, I didn't feel like it was my best effort. And that's disappointing for me, but, you know, you got to feed the kids and all that stuff. So, um, I paint for a living, so when I'm painting these models, I'm not making any money at all, and my kids starve. And when I'm painting, you know, models for people's armies and stuff, so um, that's kind of how it works. So anyways, I'm, I'm working really hard so that I can take the month of July off and finish all this stuff up and, and hopefully um, have this will be my year of the contest. So um, I, I do a lot of uh, my own base work, um, sculpting my own bases. Um, this one started as a piece of foam block that's somewhere embedded inside of that. Um, it's an imperial water outpost, so it's got a little water spigot and it's going to have water flowing into that hole, which will then flow out of the, the pipe down here into another basin down below, and then something's going to go on top of it. I started, it was supposed to be for this model, but then I had this epiphany one night when I was going to bed, and <coughs> that base completely changed, so it's going to be something completely different and much harder to do. But um, So this base is sculpted pretty much from metal putt. That's my, my choice um, putty for bases. It dries really hard. You can shave it, scrape it. Um, it it um, dilutes in water. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have used it as well. Um, it's my go-to putty for bases and also filling joints in between arms because you can thin it. You can put it in there. Technically, no, if you're very careful. Um, I tend to go OCD, and I finish up the project before I should have, and then I'm sanding afterwards, to. Mm -hmm. But it sands really well, so that's I mean, another the, reason why the, I like... With the water shaping, uh, yeah. you're able to really... Uh, Get rid of most of yeah. that, yeah. I mean, you don't lose no detail. Mm -hmm. You can, mm -hmm. because it actually dissolves the metal pad, but again, you do it gently, yeah. and... Um, I didn't know that. And uh, especially when filling cracks, like say in an arm, in a seam of an arm, I shove in the mill putt, thin it down with my sculpting tool, and then I just use the paintbrush to kind of smooth it between the two pieces. And it works really well. It's very quick. So um, this space is an, for another contest piece, which will actually go around this thing. Um, 
I watched a video, <laughs> this dude had a pillar with an archway on it, and I was like, oh, that looks cool. And so I decided to build that, and then I was like, well, that looks a little boring, so um, let's put a couple flags in the background. So now I've just probably created an extra 40 or 50 hours for this project, because <laughs> i got to paint both flags, and it's got to be to a really high level of uh, detailed freehand, like what's on here. Um, just very clean detail. Um, and, and uh, super smooth blends, all that stuff, because these are contest miniatures, so. Can I um, go back to your milk pot? Do you use the white or the gr gray? I use this standard, the yellow this gray. The gray, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's the white box with red lettering. Yeah. I use that because even though it says, um, I think it says coarse, it's not coarse. No, the, and the, white, the white is extremely fine. The white fine. is extremely fine. I've had friends that where it didn't dry on them, like they, they didn't mix it well enough. Also, when you add water to the fine, it really goes mm -hmm. So if you, this one will keep its body, but it will thin with water. You, and the so, gray you find is not that coarse. Right, right. It, it, you know, and by, by <laughs> coarse, it's super fine. Yeah.